this. So that means when your back is resting against this, there's air flowing behind it. You don't build up sweat at all. So. <laughs> so, a question that a lot of people always ask me is what gear do they need for hiking? What gear do they, need, do they need to get at the start for someone who's a first time hiker? So the question is, are you a first time hiker? And maybe some of the advice I can give, I'm no expert, I just learned the hard way on the mountain. But I'll give you some advice now and see where you go. Good girl, on this way. Sorry, my dog is going into a bed of torrents there. Where's she gone? Um, I'll follow her. Ooh. You saw that. Did you see that, Lex? Did you see that? She saw that. So first up, all I'll talk about is navigation. Know the route that you're taking. Do some research into the route that you're taking. When you're on a marked route, with arrows, you can follow the coloured arrows. You'll see these all over Ireland and all over your location if you just look for them. So if you're new to hiking, pick a route, take your time on the route, do some research into the route, but just be confident that you can relax doing a, uh, a trail. Secondly is getting some navigation tools. So. What I mean by that is maps. I have a map for every area I'm in. I have it with me, I know how to read it. Um, so at the end of the day, you can do some YouTube um, clips that will teach you the simple steps to reading a map, very useful. Uh, third, don't rely on a phone. It'll get you out in an emergency, don't rely on a phone. I have the Garmin E-Trax 20. They say don't rely on technology, rely on your knowledge of the area and your map reading skills. But this has never let me down yet. It's the E-Trax 20. You can get the E-Trax 10, 20 and 30. This is the 20 for me. And I've had it for years. Waterproof, smash proof, absolutely bulletproof. It's just incredible. So all map. The map of Ireland is on this, where I am. You can get maps for all over the world. Um, but it shows all the trails you're on. It shows the direction you're going, the location you are. You can set waypoints as in, I can press this in here and make a mark where I am right now. So if I want to take a detour, I know where I am here. And from here, I know where I, where I can go. So you can drop little uh, waypoints along the way, which is very, very important. So look, it's a minefield of information I could give you all about navigation but for me the three things pick a route at the start that you're confident on secondly get some knowledge of map reading have a map of your location your ISO map thirdly get a device if you want don't rely on it this has never let me down that's not to say it won't let me down that's why I have the knowledge of reading maps. But I love these. Just put it into your head. You want to be confident on a mountain. You don't want to be on a mountain worrying the full time. There's no point in going then. Okay, so that's my little two pence about navigation. When I started hiking, I kept buying cheap boots. There's boots out there and they're cheap. They say they're good but they're cheap. Um, I went through, I'd say in three years, I went through about four pairs of boots, which made no sense because I kept on buying cheap ones. So what I decided to do is spend and invest in me and invest in my feet. So I bought a pair of beautiful high-tech Bergamo 
uh, new buck leather boots and it um they were near 300 euro but guess what they lasted me seven years so the one thing i have noticed about hiking gear what you get is what you pay for you pay cheap you get cheap you invest money you get high quality stuff and you can 100% see the difference so just in your head if you want to test the waters about hiking you don't know if you're going to take up hiking you don't know if you're going to stay the course then yes of buy a pair of boots that will last you for a year a couple of hikes nothing wrong with that and then if you start getting the hiking bug definitely start investing but I wouldn't go head first in to buy a 300 pair of boots if you don't know you're going to be hiking all the time that's all I'll say about that but the main thing you would be looking for is Gore-Tex liner is what I always look for so if you had a pair of leather boots or a pair of fabric boots it's not the outer shell of the boot that keeps you waterproof it's the membrane in the inside of the boot that keeps you waterproof so I buy fabric boots with Gore-Tex it's waterproof I buy new buck leather with Gore-Tex they're going to be waterproof again it's the inside membrane the Gore-Tex that, that keeps you um, dry so just remember that the reason why you buy leather or fabric just pros and cons fabric are lighter um, not as durable but they are lighter and very comfortable leather boots once you take care of them you wax them up they will take much more of the beating um, they'll last a lot longer for you so they are heavier so it all depends on what you want and the style you want and the look of the boot that you want so at the end of the day do some research I'll, I'm gonna do some um, some reviews on exact hiking gear um, I'm not gonna do it in this video it's gonna take too long so this is just about your choices and what you want to do so for now look online but the, the more you invest the better you get look for Gore-Tex or something or a membrane that's something similar and they'll keep your shoes or you'll keep your feet nice and warm um, also socks very important don't put on a crap pair of socks with a good pair of boots you need to look you can buy blister proof hiking socks you can buy very good socks out there and I would they go hand in hand so, but if you buy a brilliant pair of boots and a shite pair of socks you're gonna be sore so look that's my only advice for shoes so clothing that's what I want to talk about next for years I was searching for waterproof hiking pants all I look for is waterproof hiking pants these are water resistant these are water this water that look for quick drying hiking pants it's as simple as that comfortable quick drying hiking pants at the end of the day don't rely on your hiking pants to keep you dry you rely on wet gear to keep you dry so the clothes you put on the outside for me if they're getting wet if it starts to rain that's why you have wet gear a lot of people go looking for hiking pants that are 100% water resistant they never are they say water resistant they are they're slightly water repellent but at the end of the day they're quick drying so no water holes in them that is very important just like hiking with a pair of jeans and it starts raining if you're hiking with a pair of jeans a pair of jeans soaks up water to get heavy you're going to get cold if you don't have wet gear and you just have quick drying hiking pants um the water won't stay in them you won't keep dry but the water won't stay in them and if there's a wind there after the rain they will dry very fast so that's them uh gators is something not everybody loves me personally i don't go anywhere without gators gators if you don't know i'll show you here so gators strap underneath your boot come up underneath your knee but these literally stop water from going 
into your boot. So if I stepped up to here, I'd still be waterproof. No water to a certain extent. No water will go down my boot. So they strap underneath and they guard you against the likes of all the walking, walking against bristles, walking against shrubs, anything like that. So they do protect your pants and they do protect your leg. Um, you can get ankle ones. Me, personally, I go for just under the knee. They keep me nice and uh, dry and you can walk through anything in them. So I'm happy out with them. Um, layering. Don't wear a big jumper up the mountain. There's no point. So if you wear a couple of light layers, again, quick drying, um, always have a couple of layers on. The reason is there's no point in having a t-shirt on and a massive warm jumper because there is no in between. You're either roasting hot or when you take it off, you're cold. So with layers, you can take off one layer, two layer. You can put back on one layer, two layer. So that's why we do light layers. And I always have a, say a quick drying top underneath just to catch the sweat and take it away from my body. So that's that. Um, hats, gloves, snoods. I always have, no matter what the weather is, they will always be in my bag. I'll always have a hat. I'll always have a snood goes around my neck. I'll always have gloves. And no matter what I'm doing, that's what I have. So yeah, so they are, there's so much clothing online, lads, honestly. Um, you can buy very expensive or you can buy cheap. They'll still do the job for you. They still work the same, just go with suits you. But I don't mind going a slight bit cheap on, on hiking clothing, not rain gear and not boots. That's my advice on that. So, we are talking about bags. When I started hiking, I started doing small bags, the bags that you'd have in school with the two straps, absolutely fine for day trips, absolutely fine. Then after a while, I, when I started getting into hiking, I started doing research into bags and the functionality of a good hiking bag. So, let's dig in a small bit. Three things I always look for. One, waist straps. If they have added pockets, absolutely perfect. Not, not, very, not as important as having them. This will take the support off your shoulders and it helps you to carry the load. So that your, the, the load of the bag is spread out through your body and not just on your shoulders or on your lower back. Secondly, a chest strap. It keeps these straps in nice tight here. I use it to hang stuff off. But these two, absolutely brilliant for taking the load in different parts of your body. My third one is what I look for is here. If you can see that, this is an air zone area. So what happens is the bag isn't resting on my back. Air gets to my back and if air gets to my back, I'm not sweating and I'm not cold. So let's take a quick, quick closer look at this. So this is the Lower Alpine Air Zone. A brilliant bag, absolutely brilliant. I love it. It has so many different functions. One thing I also love about it, for your camel, it has an area where that hose comes out. But if I left the pocket open and my keys fall out, my keys are on a strap. They can't go anywhere. These are the little functions that you can find in good hiking bags. And it's so bloody important. Um, on top of that, you have a dedicated waterproof place for all your first aid kits. So if you're looking for a bag, look for those three things. As you can see, it got a bit cold up here now, so I threw on a hat. A hat's a hat. As long as you like it and it keeps you warm, a hat's a hat. Um, this is our mountain of month for a mental health hat, which I love. So that's why I'm wearing that. Um, but this lightweight, compact down um, coat, jacket, if you want to call it. It is super, super warm. And 
need the most bang for your buck for your heat, definitely look at a down jacket. This is unbelievably warm and it compacts into the size of a litre bottle. That's how small this compacts in. The, once you put it on, the air starts building up in it and it puffs out. You squeeze the air out of it to compact it into this compression bag that I got with this. Again, I'll do a gear review about this. But, very important, it'll save your life. So it's after getting uh, very foggy and windy up here. That's fine, I know where I'm going. Um, so I want to talk to you about hiking poles. They're not a must have, but ever since I started using them, I can see the absolute benefits that they have. So, when I started using them, I got a bit of a shock that how much pressure it took off my back and how much pressure it took off my legs. A lot of people that don't have them when they're going up steep hills, they crouch forward. You don't let your back carry your bag, if that makes sense. You let your shoulders and the straps of the bag carry the bag. But leaning forward and your back, you're gonna start getting lower back pain because your bag is resting on your back and your lower back is holding the pressure, if that makes sense. Hiking poles force you to stand upright. Plus, you're using your upper body to propel you going forward, which takes, they say, up to 20% less pressure off your legs. So, overall, look at the benefits. It'll be less pressure on your legs to get up a mountain. You're gonna start building muscle, arms, shoulders, chest. Personally, I find them brilliant. They're not a must have, they're not even a nicety but I just find them brilliant. Plus they can get you out of a tricky situation if you run into very deep ground. And if you're on boggy area that I am right now, all this, you can use your hiking pole to check your grounding before you get to it, which is very important because two weeks ago, I went down up to my crown jewels in bog. Um, I didn't have my hiking poles with me. That's actually a lie, I did, and they were strapped to my bag, which made no sense. So, look, test them, you can get them for quite cheap. Um, and see, if they don't break the bank, they strap onto nearly every hiking bag, there is a position for them, and they're very light. So next, I want to talk to you about wet gear. If you can, get something that's breathable and 100% waterproof. Not water resistant, but waterproof. Um, I will be doing gear reviews on what I use, but when you're measuring um, the waterproofness of hiking gear, it goes by millimeters. So this could be 6,000 millimeters, 5,000 millimeters, 3,000 millimeters. Um, the higher the millimeter, the more water proof it is. Not resistant, water resistant will keep you slightly dry. Water proof is different. So I will be doing a gear review on what I use, but get something that's breathable, and get something that is very important, especially for pants, that, that you can zip up all the way, but they're so easy to get off. So they, you're not stuck with wearing them. So these come off simple, just like that. They come off so easy. And, they pack away so easy. And the same with the, the, the jackets. The 
These are small, light, and they pack away to nothing. That's what you're looking for. Don't bring a big waterproof jacket that you have. Um, there won't be any room for it. Plus it's gonna be too big. So these are for the rain, not to keep you warm. They will keep you warm because they're a wind cheater also, but don't rely on them to keep you warm. They are for keeping the rain off you. They are an extra layer though, I will say that. The problem with bringing your dog, she wants everything that you want. Easy. Good girl. So when you're going up mountains, I have my, my trusty steed with me today. Only bring a dog up a mountain that you are allowed to bring a dog up a mountain. If there are signs there to say don't bring a dog, they're nearly t nine times out of 10, they're there because of the farmer. So respect the farmer, we hike through farmer's lands. So they have livestock, they have sheep, you name it. So only bring a dog up a mountain, you're allowed to bring a dog up a mountain. And please abide by those rules. It's very, very important. Bring enough food for your journey. What to bring, it's up to you what you want to bring. Don't overpack, but have enough and have a bit extra, just in case of an emergency. Um, no matter what I'm going on, I always have extra water than I need. It adds weight, but I better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So at the end of the day, today, this is a fairly small enough mountain. I still have two liters of water with me. I'll probably go through a liter and a bit, a bit of it. I won't go through it all, but I prefer to have it than not need it. Plus I give some to the dog if she needs it. Um, pack enough. I always have a nice good flask. Buy a good quality one, because there's nothing like having a nice hot drink at the top of a mountain. Um, the one thing I started before is when I started having these flasks is when I got to the top of the mountain they were cold. So I was having coffee with milk, tea with milk. Milk cools it down. So what I started doing is started to get herbal teas, lemon tea, whatever you want. But pour hot water into your flask first to heat up the inside of the flask, pour it out, then make your tea because you're not pouring hot water into a cold flask. Um, it'll keep it hot for longer. That's all, just a little tip. It's nothing you have to do, but this is what I do. Uh, and bring enough food for yourself. So, I wanna to talk to you quickly about my first aid kit. Um, so if you're going up a mountain, have a first aid kit. Plasters. One thing that's absolutely essential is tiger tape. Tiger tape can help for anything, whether it's a sprain, or if your boot falls apart, this will hold your boot together. You could strap your ankle to your boot. At the end of the day, this is very, 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 very handy. Um, I will go through everything that I have on another video, because there is a lot in here and I'll, I, I'd like to pour it all out on a table, being honest. I have two emergency whistles. One, it is attached to my bag. <whistles> Second one though, came with the bag. So I was talking earlier about, where is it? So, take this off here. So this is one of your straps. On the strap is an emergency whistle. So if you're ever in danger, people can hear you from a long, long way away. So they're, they're very cheap. And me, I just strap one onto the side of my bag. It'll always be there. So do that. Okay. So, thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope those little bits of information help you in your uh, your quest to do a bit of hiking. But um, yeah, it's all about research and look into what you want to do. But I promise you one thing, you will not regret it. It's incredible. Mind yourself, uh, stay safe and stay safe on the mountains. Take care, bye-bye.